In a snowy landscape near Stepov in eastern Ukraine, Russian and Ukrainian armored vehicles went head-to-head in what appeared to be a mismatched fight. The Business Insider media outlet reported this. It is noted that in a video released by Ukraine's defense ministry earlier this year, a Russian T-90 tank, once billed by President Vladimir Putin as the world's best, faced off with two Ukrainian 47th Mechanized Brigade Bradley armored vehicles. The Bradley infantry fighting vehicle supplied to Ukraine by the US is primarily designed to carry infantry on assaults with the firepower to engage fortified positions and lighter armored vehicles while leaving head-on confrontations with a top tank to the Abrams tank it would normally fight alongside according to the Business Insider. The Bradley is equipped with capabilities that allow it to engage an enemy tank should a fight arise but its light armor makes it vulnerable. The Russian T-90 should have been more than a match for the Bradley, yet the American IFV came out on top. That battlefield win speaks to the strengths of the crew and the boldness to use the Bradley in tough battles without the critical support of more powerful main battle tanks. In the video of the engagement, the Bradleys fire rounds repeatedly into the Russian T-90 with their 25mm chain-driven autocannons appearing to damage the tank's control system. The Russian tank's turret starts spinning and then the tank veers off course and crashes into a tree. It's an example of the crucial role the Bradley has played for Ukraine in the frontline battles against Russia in which its versatility, speed, armor and capable weapons have been key. It is a very versatile vehicle. Gustav Gressel, a military analyst at the European Council on Foreign Relations, told Business Insider explaining that a Bradley can both transport and engage any target on the battlefield. The US gave Ukraine its first batch of more than 60 fighting vehicles in early 2023 in anticipation of its summer counteroffensive, but their success during that endeavor was limited. Ukraine deployed the armored vehicles in groups carrying troops in assault attacks on Russia's defensive lines, but Russia was able to hinder advances using mines and threaten massed armor with drones, artillery and guided missiles. Ukraine has received 300 Bradleys, of which they've lost at least 90, according to open source trackers. The Institute for the Study of War team pointed out that the Russian invaders were losing too much equipment and weapons for minimal gains on the front. This can leave the enemy army without the tools to wage war. As American analysts note, the Russian invaders are still trying to regain the initiative on the battlefield and achieve quick victories with the help of a mechanized maneuver. However, large-scale frontal attacks cause serious losses. It is not only about manpower, but also about technology. Analyzing the actions of the Russian army, The Institute for the Study of War team came to the conclusion that the Russian military command cannot master the nuances of a mechanized maneuver on an almost transparent battlefield in Ukraine. The readiness of the Russian military command to spend a large number of armored vehicles on limited tactical tasks reflects poor long-term operational planning, explained the American Institute for the Study of War. According to analysts, restrictions on Russian equipment in the medium and long term will lead to the fact that such failed mechanized attacks will become more expensive over time. Until now, the soldiers of the Russian Federation counted on the restoration of stocks of Soviet-era weapons and military equipment, especially armored vehicles, but the situation may change soon. Against the background of large-scale losses, the command of the Russian president will be forced to additionally mobilize the Russian economy and defense industry. It is also important to understand that the aggressor country is gradually depleting its limited Soviet reserves. American analysts have doubts that the Russian defense industry will be able to produce enough vehicles to withstand the high rate of equipment losses even if additional economic mobilization is carried out. As of today, Russia has enough armored vehicles to conduct periodic company and larger mechanized attacks along the entire front line for the foreseeable future. However, the failed strategy of the Russian command will provoke a worsening of the situation with the equipment of the Russian armed forces in the coming years.